A reading from 1 Corinthians. For I have received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after you had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Deacon Ed is a no-show again. We're celebrating the feast of St. Francis Xavier, a great priest, a great missionary. And the Mass has been offered for Suzanne Marie Boudreau. So as we come to pray, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, and in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Suzanne Marie Boudreau. O God, who through the preaching of St. Francis Xavier won many peoples to yourself, Grant that the hearts of the faithful may burn with the same zeal for faith, and the Holy Church may everywhere rejoice in an abundance of offspring. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Now it's time to open up our hearts and listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day, they will sing a song in the land of Judah. A strong city have we. He sets up walls and ramparts to protect us. Open up the gates to let in a nation that is just, one that keeps faith. A nation of firm purpose you keep in peace, in peace for its trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an eternal rock. He humbles those in high places, and the lofty city he brings down. He tumbles it to the ground, levels it with dust. It is trampled underfoot by the needy, by the footsteps of the poor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to all song number 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This gate is the Lord's. The just shall enter it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Please stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is 
snare. According to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rains fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and ruffled the house. But it did not collapse, it, being solidly, it was set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. And it collapsed and was completely ruined. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I spent eight wonderful years at St. Francis Xavier in Wigan, so I know a lot about uh, St. Francis Xavier. My favorite story about St. Francis Xavier is as a young college student, he wanted to be the playboy. He wanted to be rich and famous. That was his goal. And he had a friend, Ignatius of Loyola. And Igno Ignatius of Loyola kept quoting him one scripture verse. You know what it was? Make I the right, that's right. What does it profit a person to gain the whole world and lose his soul in the process? And because of that, look at the great work that he, uh, that he performed. He was one of the founders of the Jesuits. He was a missionary to India, Japan, many places, and his goal was to get to China. Never got there, but he was a great missionary and brought so many people to Christ. And uh, he's the patron saint of missions. So we're all called to be missionary. Uh, the, the term we use today is a more biblical one. Uh, we're all called to be disciples. The word disciple is mentioned, I think, 269 times in the New Testament. So we're all called to be disciples. And disciples need formation. And today, with the internet, it's so easy for us to be self-educated and self-formed. Like the weekend readings, there are so many great YouTubes on them. Four I would highly recommend. Jeff Cavins, I think most of you are familiar with. He has a weekly explanation of the Sunday readings. Dr. Brian Petrie has a YouTube on the weekly explanation of the Sunday readings. Bishop Barron, I think a lot of you are familiar with. And the one, my favorite one is from Australia, Jeffrey Plant. He gives the historical background and the hermeneutical background for the Sunday readings and, and beautiful on YouTube. So I would highly recommend those four so that you can educate yourself on the scriptures. And of course, we always have to be careful that we don't just come and be self-centered about the good news because everything about the good news is going out. That's what a disciple is, one who is sent. An apostle is one who is sent. And by being baptized and confirmed, we're all called to be intentional disciples, to go out, bring Christ to others, and others to Christ. And one of the processes I love at the present time is the Steubenville Quads. Uh, many of you here have been in it for the last year. It is the best I've seen. It is free. It is authentically Catholic. It is um, based on discipleship, multiplication. Everyone that graduates from a group has to start a new quad with three new people. And you can imagine the way it will, it will, it will, it will influence the world. So I believe 100% in the discipleship quad. It's all online. So you can Google it and Google the training workshops. So anyone listening to this, can become an expert on discipleship quiet. If you would like to be closer to Jesus, take today's two recommendations. Be part of a discipleship quad and go to the people I mentioned, Bishop Barron, 
Jeff Cavins, Brian Petrie, or Jeffrey Plant. Google their YouTube explanations of the Sunday readings and uh, study up on the Bible. Two great ways to become a missionary. Amen? Amen. That is great. Let us pray for all the faithful departed. May God grant them eternal rest and peace. We remember especially Regina Fortenbury, Charlie Haas, Jimmy Allen, Reverend Red Powell. We pray to the Lord. Oh. Sorry, not Jimmy Allen, Jimmy Ladner. Jimmy Ladner. Yeah, Jimmy Ladner. Yeah, Jimmy Ladner. Jimmy Ladner in funerals today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Slip of the tongue. And we have a number of people close to death. We lift up all those who are close to death and their families as they walk into heaven's gate. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray that everyone here will follow the example of St. Francis Xavier, be part of a quad, and become a missionary disciple. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who have left the Church of Jesus Christ, may they come back. To the Catholic Church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For God's guidance and direction in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let us pause now and make our own special needs known to God. Almighty God, we thank you for all your blessings. We ask your blessing on all the people working on the vaccine and the rollout of the vaccine for the coronavirus. May we be free from this terrible human scourge through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, these offerings we bring in commemoration of St. Francis Xavier, and grant that as he journeyed to distant lands, out of longing for the salvation of souls, so we too, bearing effective witness to the gospel, may with our brothers and sisters eagerly hasten towards you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today we will pray the second Eucharistic prayer of reconciliation and a quote from St. Cyril of Jerusalem. He said, Do not doubt, therefore, regards the bread and wine as simply that, or sorry, do not therefore regard the bread and wine as simply that, for they are according to the Master's declaration, the body and blood of Christ. 
even though the senses suggest to you the other. Let faith make you firm. Do not judge in this matter by taste, but be fully assured by the faith, not doubting that you be indeed worthy of the body and blood of Christ. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you we might love one another, through your Son whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with this very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph our spouse, with the apostles, and all the saints, especially Francis Xavier, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. <laughs> Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, 
grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but all except the word that my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your mysteries, O Lord, kindle in us that fire of charity with which St. Francis Xavier burned for the salvation of souls, so that walking ever more worthily in our vocation, we may obtain with him the reward you promise to those who labor well in your harvest through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for me. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Father Patty talking about Francis Xavier certainly did uh, bring me lots of memories, which I'll tell you about in a minute. The readings today are about victory through action at the right time and waiting and patience at the right time. Isaiah 26, 1 to 6 tells of a time of crisis when Ahaz, king of Jerusalem, had no alternative but to trust in God. He was unable to muster an army and repel an invasion from the northern kingdom of Israel. Verses 1 to 6 are a victory song celebrating God's victory, salvation, over the enemies of Judah, the righteous nation. The psalm number 118 gives thanks to the Lord, opens the gates of justice, and asks the Lord to grant salvation, prosperity, and blesses he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7 to 21 and 24 to 27 verses, calls for action in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, strong action. Our patron of the day, St. Francis Xavier showed us that yes, we are called to go and preach to all nations, but not necessarily with words or even on distant shores. Only by sacrifice, the giving up of all selfish gain, could Francis be free to bear the good news to the world. We had a great uncle who was a Jesuit priest. His name was Reverend John uh, William Hines, no, that's not right. Anyway, Hines was his name. And uh, he made a fame for himself by not only uh, building up the retreat for men in Louisiana, but uh, going about reaching out to people, not just with words, but with actions, so much so that uh, his little great niece here became a nun because of that, Sister Danielle. I had thought of it too, but this big hunk came along when I was 16. You saw his picture back there. I couldn't do anything but marry him, so there you go. So Uncle John, we called him, uh, was a extremely successful in the eyes of the world, and yet we think he was successful in his dealings with us as our father was in World War II, and he, he was like a, a grandfather to us. So we bless Father Hines. And we ourselves are called to preach by our everyday lives to our families, our children, our spouses, our co-workers, our great and grand nieces and nephews. And just as St. Francis Xavier, a truly Advent saint, 
announce the dawn of the reign of God and the coming of Christ to peoples in the Far East, we can do so to those around us here and now. Thank you very much. Very good, May. I'm glad you got the hunk. <laughs> <laughs> got a cute email here. As he was saying his pre-Christmas night prayers, Johnny's voice suddenly rose to a high, loud pitch as he fairly screamed the words, Dear God, I would like a walkie-talkie for Christmas and a BB gun and an electric chain, an electric train, if that is not asking too much. His little brother kneeling beside him asked, What's the idea of hollering so loud? God isn't deaf. I know God isn't deaf, muttered Johnny, but Grandma is. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and in us our love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, and destroy the hearts of the faithful. Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and rejoice in His consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.